Okay, I'm, um, let me just set the stage then um, that Sarah has, uh, I'm, I hope I'm not creating a cartoon, not to have anything against cartoons, um, of, of what you just said, but of working out from a, uh, you know, one um, piece of art, art uh, an, a work of art, and, and then finding these many associations that inform the work of art. I, I hope I'm not completely undermining everything that you've said. <laughs> um, my, uh, uh, I, I will be even, I will be less coherent than that, but um, in this sort of a, a report of, a, of a work in progress. Uh, so the project that I'm working on is a series of case studies uh, <coughs> in, a, in an attempt to, again, very much from an historian's point of view, to try to press uh, the point about the use of visual culture in, in studying history as opposed to, of course, as we've been discussing all week, just use this illustration and perhaps different approaches and methods that might be illustrated by these case studies. I, I won't go into in, in any detail about this, but one of them involves, and I, I'm sorry about this, we can go over this in, at another time, but uh, questions about the transformation of cartoons over the course of, of the Civil War, particularly, of course, of the image of, uh, of uh, enslaved and then freed peoples, uh, but I, I couldn't resist just showing you two images just in terms of giving a sense of the profound changes that take place, some of which we still need to try to figure out and explain. So in this case, uh, this is um, a cartoon uh, that, that uh, was part of the, of course, uh, and, and, and Peter showed w one side of the 1864 presidential campaign cartoons. That was the 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 uh, anti-McClellan cartoon, I think it was our, our plan versus their plan, or their plan versus our plan. Um, and this was indeed one of, <coughs> one of the cartoons that was um, commissioned by the Democratic Party in, in New York City, uh, a series that were called the, um, basically the miscegenation series, obviously, uh, trying to exploit uh, you know, the mythical uh, Lincoln plan to mix the races and uh, and uh, the reason I show this one is, is it'll become clear and apparent. This was called, it was a number four in the series called the Miscegenation Ball and it was supposedly based on a real incident that had taken place in the Lincoln Central Campaign Club in September 1864 and a, scandal, a scandalous interracial affair with white men dancing with and intimately embracing black women under Lincoln's portrait, which you can't really see way, way, way in the back. And, and to indicate that it was actually a real event, there are guys looking through the, the skylight at the top. Um, it was done by a, uh, a, an anti-Lincoln lithography firm called Bromley and & Company, and it was, it, the lithograph was rendered by a uh, Christopher Kimmel and Foster. That was the name of the company. Well, I show that to you, and as you can see, it's you know, heavily <coughs> caricatured. Uh, black women and w dancing with white men, you know, obviously the intimacy with a band in the foreground. Well, one year later, we see this image done by the same Christopher Kimmel, uh, which I think is one of the, the most fascinating and profound. I, I only saw this for the first time last year. Uh, and uh, this is particularly interesting, it strikes me, is that um, as we will <coughs> talk about when we're, when we're discussing a you know, memorial imagery, you know, the whole question of standing soldiers kneeling slaves, uh, the, the dichotomy that represents in many ways a sort of betrayal of the possibility of public, the public sculptural image for freed people. Well, this one has the kneeling slave, but it also has a black standing soldier, not only one, but who's wounded. I just thought as an image in the foreground of, as this one's called, the end of the rebellion in the United States in 1865, which includes the, you know, the snake of secession. I mean, there's so much crazy imagery in this in, in, in this print published uh, in 1865. I also love the notion, obviously, prematurely, Andrew Johnson is representing, of course, uh, the force of uh, behind, uh, uh, again, behind those soldiers. And then finally, before I really get to the point here, just in terms of the change in the comic press, this is Yankee Notions in February, <coughs> in February 1866, where it, the stark choice is made here, which of these should vote, is what the caption says, a question and not a question. Obviously, not the former rebel standing on the Constitution, but rather the black soldier standing with the American flag. The Yankee notions that 
uh, in, at the early stages of the Civil War is trucking in, uh, in completely stereotyped and racist imagery. But I want to, uh, to focus on, <coughs> on another, one of the case studies that, that I'm working on right now, and, and that involves attempting to take apart an event, see how indeed we can understand a particular event um, in, uh, in ways that we would not perhaps understand it, as well as provide additional information for, and I'm speaking now as a social historian. Um, and the one that, um, that came to mind for me, I was trying to figure out oh, which battle and so on and so forth, and then came to the realization that um, indeed next year is the 150th anniversary uh, of the largest instance of civil unrest in U.S. history, the, the uh, July 1863. New York City draft riots. Now, it's interesting that in the 150 years that uh, since the riots, there have been many studies of the riots uh, in relation to the history of the city, of course, to the war, race relations, immigration, the history of policing, of course, the history of rioting, the, the, uh, the, the creation and the destruction of African American communities. Uh, some of the books that just come to mind, you know, very, very good studies of the last few years, <coughs> excuse me, is Adrian Cook's Armies of the Streets, Ira Bernstein's The New York City Draft Riots, Leslie Harris's In the Shadow of Slavery, the most recent is Barnett Schechter's The Devil's Own Work. Yet, and many of these are really excellent works of scholarship, yet none of them, none of them in 150 years, I can safely say, None have used visual evidence except as illustrations, okay? Uh, and uh, with the important section, uh, exception, I should say, of a, an art historian named Ross Barrett, who recently completed a dissertation that includes a consideration of the, of, of the imagery of the draft riots, but, but not historians. Yet, at least eight publications pictorially covered the riots. Three were in the United States, uh, Harper's Weekly, Frank Leslie's, the New York Illustrated News, you heard about them ad nauseum, right? Two in France, three in England, four of them extensively covered the riots, so extensively that the coverage of Gettysburg was shoved off the Illustrated Press's pages, it, and the riot really took up much more. So many people have commented that one of the battles that actually didn't get much coverage was the uh, was Gettysburg because of uh, the draft riot, and, and actually Vicksburg also, the, uh, the end of the siege of Vicksburg. I should also add that uh, this is actually uh, images uh, from a British publication, a little known British public publication called, called London Illustrated Times. And this was of the burning of the provost marshal's office and then shooting of the crowd. I love the tree, by the way, on the right-hand corner. It's, I don't, that doesn't look like anything I've seen in New York City, but <laughs> this is an argument against global warming, I guess, in some way that they used to be more tropical here. So what I'd, I'd like to do, and, and uh, there are many other, of course, uh, other coverage in the form of like humor publications in terms of political cartoons and so on. So. What, I, what I'd like to briefly do uh, today is, uh, you know, as I said, this is really a work in progress and it's going to be more perhaps following my thinking along the lines of trying to decipher uh, some of these images, uh, is, is to look at uh, one notorious instance. Uh, well, let's start by looking at one notorious instance during the riot, just to sort of get the landscape here. Uh, to consider how coverage among the papers was different and maybe how it was interchangeable to begin with. And also we'll try to figure out if, and I think this is key to it, well how much is this eyewitness accounts, how much of this are, how much of this are constructions or demi-constructions, I mean what, what, what is involved here? This just for what it's worth is, one of the things I wanted to do right from the start and we'll discuss briefly is, okay, let's get a photograph of the Colored Orphan and Asylum and then we can sort of begin to compare. Well there is no photograph of the Colored Orphan and Asylum. There's one photograph of uh, the courtyard with uh, young African American, you know, with African American children playing in it. There's another of a classroom. There's no exterior photographs whatsoever. Uh, in this case, um, an 1840s uh, print. Um, now, the Colored Orphans Asylum was very near uh, the Graduate Center. It was on 42nd Street, right near at the time the reservoir, 42nd Street and Fifth Avenue, uh, right nearby. So this is it in the in the 1850s, and this is a a looser sketch. It gives you an idea how. By the way, this is so. This is 1847, the one on the bottom, which gives you an idea that there's it's it's pretty much built around by 
by 1863, New York has moved up past 42nd Street and that indeed it's now in an urban setting as opposed to the almost rural setting that existed at the time. And the Colored Orphan Asylum is, is probably pretty obviously a, uh, a philanthropic institution, uh, both heavily supported by, by Republicans, but also by the longstanding African American community uh, in, in New York City. So if we look just very, very quickly at just some of the, the, of the images of the burning of the um, <coughs> Orphan's Asylum, they sort of range from, as, as in this fairly small engraving, which is part of a, a, a series of vignettes and a double page spread uh, in a supplement on, uh, that was uh, that was published in Frank Leslie's of the Riot, one that I think it's safe to say is not very detailed. Um, and if you were saying, if you were just looking at this quickly, would you say this is uh, an eyewitness account? Is this any any sort of immediate response? It's not a trick question. I have no idea. <laughs> well, let me. I'll just quickly cut to the chase here, and this lacks a lot of specificity, uh, certainly in terms of, seemingly in terms of the location, but you know, we'll have to figure this out as we look at the others, but, uh, and perhaps, even, and not much specificity within the crowd, the crowd itself. Uh, this one was in the New York Illustrated News, uh, um, in, uh, it is equally not very detailed. Um, and so far, we've looked at these two images, not particularly detailed, not uh, you, the, more certainly of the crowd in the sense of seeing in the foreground, um, uh, you know, the raised torches and certainly the, the looting, <coughs> excuse me, the Color Wharf is Asylum, which is one of the aspects of it. This was, okay, so then we look though at, at another one and this is uh, Harper's Weekly. Now, uh, this was drawn, although it wasn't credited to Thomas Nast. Uh, any thoughts about this this one? And the reason why I suggested it's probably Thomas Nash to just say is that he lived on 44th Street. So he lived two blocks away. So it was very, and we do know at least from his, his earliest biographer, um, uh, Payne, uh, uh, Bigelow Payne, that uh, he, was, he was walking around during the riots. Yeah. In the earlier sketches, it looked as if the building was completely different nondescript, any building that's just being labeled color or Right, design. right, right, right. This at least This when you have a sense of, of, of locality, yeah. specificity. Right. Yes? You can actually make out what seems to be more, um, even though there's a mob, there's individual acts that are happening, I'm thinking in that sort of sequential way you were talking about. I don't know if it, if it is speaking in any sequential way over time, but you can at least depict different sort of conditions, events that could have been happening simultaneously between a more mixed crowd, mm. is how I read it, too. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm. I couldn't tell who, uh, some of the crowd was kind of homogenous, but this looks like you can clearly depict different types of people. Yeah, and I, I agree, and there's little scenes going on that could each have been sketched and then placed in, little events going on among dyads or groups of people right. before. Right. And the ladder in the window is sort of telling. Yeah. Or it, maybe it's not a ladder, maybe it's part of the window, but it looks I, like I think it's a window actually just bursting out from, yeah. the, from, the, from the fire but itself. What, what more detail? Right. And here you really can see who's doing what to what, right? Because in the other pictures you might imagine maybe it's the black people who are having some, you know, if mm. you just see the image, maybe mm. it's the black and the colored folks who are having some kind of crazy reaction and doing something, right? It might not be so clear who's doing what to whom. Right. But here right. it's far more clear. Yeah, yeah, they were. And the previous one it also looked just like they were spectating a fire mm -hmm. and here. Uh -huh. the yeah, company. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know it's hard to see, but there's a, there's there's a, a lot of pull, looting of furniture yeah. in, in the foreground, and there's a lot of beating of kids yeah. here, yeah. which, by the way, is didn't happen. I mean, they, this was not a benevolent, as we'll discuss. This is not a benevolent riot. This is a race riot, or certainly it becomes a race riot. And in fact, the children, except for one child who was mistakenly left behind, they 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 were all they all escaped by a back door. Uh, of, of the of the asylum, so this is Nast also, or I think it's Nast, and it has all of Nast sort of. It's hard to see here, uh, you know, details. 
I'm just going to move forward a little bit. I, I just because, believe it or not, there there are many more. Um, and uh, okay, here's 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 another one. This is this is now the Illustrated London News, uh, which had extensive coverage. I've been trying to figure out who possibly did this. But any thoughts about this one? Certainly more detailed, is it not? I mean, I mean, there. Uh, and by the way, this is clearly the side of the of the of the asylum of the orphan asylum. But certainly a lot of stuff about the looting going on and people coming over the wall and throwing things over the wall. What's interesting, interesting to me, and I only noticed, I have to say, two days ago when I was pulling this together, is there's actually a lot of similarity between the Leslies and the very undetailed Leslies and the Illustrated London News, which makes me think that probably the same guy did the sketches because there was a lot of, uh, particularly uh, for the Illustrated London News, a certain amount of stringers who were doing uh, uncredited in many cases, and I say certainly we're not credited with the riot. So one being a tiny vignette in a in a double page, and this one was a half page uh, um, engraving. So at least, yeah. Some of you said, is the, are you, okay, so you might have a stringer doing the art, they do the sketch. Um, how does it get back to London to get does it go back to London in sketch form, in engraved form? Oh, no. It would, so it, well, what would have happened, um, and I'm assuming, as we'll look at some others, that the, that the uh, Illustrated London News ones are very specific in terms of locality and that they were made in New York. No, they would be sketches and they would be sent by ship mm -hmm. to, to London. And, and the, the, the coverage in the Illustrated London News was not until mid-August by the time that it, that it was. Um, but, you know, that never prevented anybody from doing two sketches, and, and for one thing. And, um, and, and in light of the fact also that they were for very, very different purposes in the sense of one was vignettes, you know, because and, and, uh, the, the Frank Leslie's one is made up, I think, as a double page, and there are at least 10, I think, vignettes in it. So there are only some of the, none, none of them which are, are, are that detailed. So, uh, and this uh, is, is an interesting contrast. This is Le Monde Illustré. This is the French coverage of, uh, of it. I, I've actually just uh, located another one from another public. But this is sort of like uh, Notre Dame. Yeah. Uh, and I like the barricades too because it's really... Now, although, and this is, you know, this is important. Everybody got what this was in terms of it by the point of the... Uh, that's a black family hiding and being attacked in, uh, on the side there. So... Um, but this is a full page engraving in the par in the in, in the in one of the two uh, Paris Illustrated newspapers. So, uh, so just looking quickly at this, I <coughs> about that we need to consider such evidence uh, and consider well, what is the use of such evidence beyond you know sort of these interesting comparisons? What do we what do we get from such evidence? Um, and, and so I'm going to be asking more questions than giving answers. And first. I guess in, in terms of just sort of the meat and potatoes of social history, what can, what can these images, if anything, tell us about social history? About, for example, the appearance or the dress or the conditions uh, of, of particular settings or the particular actors, especially because of the paucity of photographic evidence in the period when it comes to um, non-elite people and, and non-middle class people. That, that not a completely imprecise term. While we need to obviously be alert to the visual language of class and ethnicity, of course, and race and gender. So in this image, so these are two images that were in Harper's Weekly, the dead sergeant in 22nd Street, uh, and then below on the lower is the sacking of a drugstore on 2nd Avenue. And okay, any immediate, you know, thoughts? It was more of a question, I just wonder, oh. okay. Oh, or anything well, like uh, the thing about um, they, they're probably these are probably in two different incidents. Um, in in uh, so that uh, uh, the Second Avenue is is not is not poor. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and tw and Twenty Second Street. I mean, you know, New York has always been dotted with poverty, and I mean that's been 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 part of it. Um, I mean, it's a really good question because I, I'm not dealing with chronology here. I mean, it's a three. It's a four-day riot, so there's a lot of incidents happening all over the city. I mean, this is you know this is a vast event, 
that affects most, actually not the downtown part of the city, but just about any every other part of it. So, so that's, I don't know if that's an answer or not. I just remember wondering about the quality of the the characteristics of the neighborhood. Oh, okay, there, okay. And, yeah, well, well, clearly, you know, these are going to be, a drugstore is not going to be an important neighborhood, for example. That's, you know, that thing is right off. I, the thing that jumps out from this is that the whites are represented as the racial grotesque. I mean, there, it's the exaggeration animality of the Irish. Their clothes are half off or half naked. They're somewhat savage. Mm -hmm. um, so it's real, an exaggerated caricature of the, the whites in the conflict um, in, in terms of these kind of animalistic and grotesque elements, a stereotype of the, the drunk. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. But the Irish weren't considered white mm -hmm. yeah. at that point in the 1980s. Well, certainly, yeah, to, yeah. to some extent, right. I mean, that, that's certainly, um, I mean, that's become, of course, now a sort of trope. I mean, I, 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 I agree that it's not clear, you know, of their, their you know, their definition at that period of time. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. Part of why they're but, that way. but I, I, I'd also raise the notion that, uh, and I've raised this before, this is about, uh, because this is where, I want to point to the fact that part of both the caricature is this is the immiserated poor. The, and, and, and also a, a shift that takes place in the riot. But in other words, it's not simply about the Irish, it's about the poor Irish. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, there's, there's a number, I think, I think I also pulled this out here as well, where uh, this is the, um, now this is in the New York Illustrated, uh, New York Illustrated News, the first one being the brutal murder of Colonel O'Brien on 46th Street by the rioters. Uh, and then uh, in, on the upper right, Actually, it's called the, quote, people, unquote, carrying plunder from the orphan asylum. But the reason I, 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 I just wanted to point out is the barefootedness, the sort of raggedness. It's hard for us to determine here, but I, I try to raise the notion that some of this is the visual language of the time, but some of this is pictorial reporting. I remember getting reprimanded by an Irish historian quite a number of years ago in a documentary that we did in 1984. Um, called Five Points, where um, he, he rightly, uh, much to my embarrassment, you know, made the point about, we, we, it was basically a story of an Irish family, and the end result was, in some sense, we made them extremely middle class in, in our efforts, as, as uh, Peter had sort of raised before, and trying to, sort, you know, to humanize the stereotypes that existed before. And then he sort of said to me at one point, but you know, the Irish, when they arrived, the potato famine Migration were immiserated poor. They were poor that looked different than other New Yorkers. When you see some of these caricatures, they're of course caricatures, but there's in social history information here about a people who were strangers in a strange land. That'll obviously change the course of the period of time. But I'm just raising this because this is like the only sort of documentation that we do it. There's no doc social documentary photography this period of time, of course. There's no portrait photography. I think probably the, the closest we'll come to it is when we see some of the portraits perhaps of soldiers where then they're in uniforms, they're not you know, wearing them. But I'm raising it as at least things that we need to sort of consider here about, about this, um, we keep using the term slippage I know here, but the, the sort of slippage between commentary and reportage because I think these, uh, you know, and the suggestion to which they're, you know, they're in fact uh, they are eyewitness in what possibly they're pre pre presenting. Because as we see in an image such as this, which was in Harper's Weekly, uh, which is the, uh, the charge of the police and the rioters at the Tribune office, the, the rioters kept coming back to attack the, you know, the very Republican in New York Tribune. Uh, the indication, of course, of the, the Irishness, is, as you've raised before, the rioters, but you know, they have shillelaghs, you know, they have the, you know, the, 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 uh, the sort of chin whiskers, and of course, the prog, uh, the the you know ape-like features as as it's sort of presented as as a compared and this is a corporate in this case Harper's Weekly the svelte policemen uh, you know all of whom wasp waists <laughs> I can't believe the New York City Police Department changed so much over the course of the years. Um, and indeed, there's also the, uh, and this is the New York Illustrated News, if, in case you didn't know you know what the ethnicity was supposed to be uh, this one's called. Um, um, the popular tumult, <coughs> I guess maybe a reader, one of, one of the people sketched from life. Um, okay, but if we look at, 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 there are certain moments though that 
what are we to make of certain images of the riots, for example, in Frank Leslie's? Okay, this is, a, this is you can't see it, I'll get to a, a detail. Two-page spread that was in uh, the, um, uh, let's see, which uh, it was in the August 1st issue of, of, of Frank Leslie's. So it was actually published in late July, which basically a week, week and a half after, after the riots. Now this one is called <coughs> a Group of Rioters Marching Down Avenue A. Okay, what, what, you've, you've seen the other pictures of, of the riots so far. What, 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 what is your reaction to this one? Very orderly. Well, one of them actually is wearing, yeah, a, a, a forager cap, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They all look like, I don't know, they dress in five kind of somewhat different walks of life, but they all are, no, that's a that's a that's a good point. D different walks of life, yeah. And, and similarly, okay, that's that's on one side of the page, and the other side of the page is a group of rioters marching. Uh, no, this one is a group of rioters marching down Second Avenue. The one was Avenue A. This one's Second Avenue. Now you saw Second Avenue before in one of those. In one of those. Although, unfortunately, uh, I don't know what part of the riot, and that's often hard to 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 figure out. I'm going to have to figure out which part of the riot they're they're illustrating. Any any thoughts about this one? I mean, pretty much the same as the other, only a sense of saying that this is not. Now, this could be, um, uh, this could be, and that always makes Les, lots, some of Leslie's coverage sort of interesting, uh, the, the close observation about perhaps less stereotyped than the others, or it also could be, as we do know, evidence of the change in the riot after the first day starting as an anti-draft riot, including trade unionists, much more variegated crowd and quickly deteriorated into a race riot and these types of folks disappeared. On the other hand, there are other incidents that we know where there still is a sort of mixed crowd. But I raise it because this indeed may be uh, information that supports uh, impressionistic information that we have about how the riot changes over the course of, of the first day. So let's very, very quickly look also at this question about the documentation of urban space and locales. We, we certainly got some sense of it in terms of the colored orphan asylum. This is <coughs> the mob burning the provost marshal's office. And the provost marshal's office for, uh, was on 3rd Avenue and 46th Street. Um, this was in the Illustrated London News. Um, and I guess the question is, we do have, of course, as, as um, I can't remember uh, who showed it. I, oh, I guess it was Tony Lee showed a photograph, for example, of Broadway, the one that was with, with uh, you know, Matthew Brady's office in it. And there are certain photo th thoroughfares that by the 1860s are, are being photographed in the stereographs and so on and so forth. But as we'll see, there, there are many places that are not. But, so how do we judge the accuracy? I mean, what, what is the utility? I mean, so this is an incredibly huge crowd around the uh, provost marshal's office. Um, and how do we test the accuracy uh, of any suggestions? Uh, uh, obviously, we can state right off, it would be great if we had photographs, but we rarely do. Yeah? My first thought was that the size of the crowd looks exaggerated, given the, the depth of field. I mean, it seems like the building is very, very, very far away from where the sketch artist hmm. was stood or was seated, given the number of people between him and the building. Um, so I'm curious about the the, the perspective, the dimen and, and the dimensions. And the dimensions. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a good that's a good point. Yeah. One of the first things I would do is go to Google Maps and see what's there right now and see if I can find historic maps. Yeah, and although New York streets have changed drastically <coughs> ar ar yeah. around there, but but yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Historic maps. Yeah. Well, you sort of stole that from me then also because at <laughs> least no 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 not Google. I didn't wasn't going to Google, not going to Google. Uh, maps, but rather, for example, the insurance maps of the period are one place where you can see, and, and uh, yeah. there are other, I know there are other ones, but I, I, I was trying to just find the Paris one where they have them wonderfully labeled, but then you can't do much larger. Mm -hmm. So we're saying basically it, it, it was right around this area here. And the great thing is, of course, about, uh, and, and, and in some cases then, you can get further information of course, about lot sizes and things like that. The, the insurance maps, of course, are great because they it also indicate brick buildings, wood buildings, things like that, um, as well as the, the, the amount of structures that are you know, behind and you know, they're, they're really, really, you know, they're really terrific in terms of that. But I, th I think th there are ways for 
to at least begin to see, uh, and Ashton's point was, was was right, because I, I've always wondered about, I mean, you know, that looks like, I mean, on one level, this is clearly an eyewitness account, and I'll raise why, I, why we can know that from other reasons, but this looks like Paris, <laughs> this, you know, I mean, in, in terms of the size of the thoroughfares, I, I don't think that Third Avenue was that wide, but that's what we need, that's what we need to test out. On yeah. the map, where's the burning building? Well, I, to be perfectly frank, I haven't figured that out yet, because half of this stuff I've been doing in the last few days. So I'm, I'm assuming that it is one of these buildings here, because I think these are brick buildings. Okay, not, not the one on the lower right. On the lower right corner, meaning here. Well, up the blue yellow thing above. This, yeah, it's not that yeah well, I I don't know, I don't know. Um, the whole upper left corner is vacant. Right? Well, you know that's something that I, that of course that's the other thing the New York Public Light didn't provide, which were the keys. But um, mm -hmm. because I think in, in in many cases, yes, these are vacant areas. In other cases, these were almost like you know uh, shacks and something. I mean, spaces that you know and that's other what people live. Is a shack in the fort? Well, yes. Oh, sorry, but the. Look, this. So we we see that we see that in the foreground, right? So I was trying to figure out what that was. Well, you know, it turns out, and this is where actually uh, the the juxtapositions. What what you come to realize is the extent to which there are people who have gone to certain events and they're 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 sketching it from different angles. So, for example, if I can remember which one, this is. Yes, Mr. Andrews of Virginia speechifying to the rioters from the roof of a butcher's shop on 46th Street. That's what, this is the front of that shack we saw. It's a butcher shop, it's, uh, which of course uh, is terrific in understanding. Uh, these, are, this is, uh, these seemingly have been replicated now by newsstands, which are like in the middle of the street now in New York City again. Uh, but you know, this, this structure that, um, that we can see you know, here, uh, you know, sort of cheek to jowl to the corner of, um, I'm guessing that's what I need, that, that, that we're on 46th Street and uh, that's 3rd Avenue. But just to rush ahead in a similar fashion then, um, now this is, uh, this is, this is um, conflict between the military and rioters on 1st Avenue and this was a documented event in lots of different ways. This is 1st Avenue between 18th and 19th Streets and a confrontation that took place between the 5th Regiment Durier Zouaves, commanded for what it's worth by Colonel Winslow, on Wednesday, uh, the July, July 15th. Now, this is a perfect example is working class neighborhood, actually poor neighborhood. This, there are no photo, I mean, I've been looking for photographs of this. And wouldn't it be great if we could sort, I mean, this is the sort of information that we don't have provided by photography. Assuming, as I do here, particularly with the accompanying description, which goes on about where they stood and so on and so forth, that somebody was at least in the vicinity looking at this. And certainly we have, we, we are aware of this sort of, you know, structures with the shed-like, um, you know, um, porches and, and in front of, of certain establishments, street carts, uh, tracks, and so on. The, the one thing that I, th that I question is, you really can't see it here, but the troops were Zouaves, and those guys don't look like, uh, dressed like Zouaves, but maybe that he wasn't observing the Zouaves at the time. Um, okay, then there's the question, I, and then of course, uh, where was this in terms of the, in terms of the um, not that it's going to help out a lot, but uh, so it would have been somewhere in this area, and that's where uh, I haven't had a chance to, is even looking at some of the labeling of the, of the, uh, of those, you can see wine, <coughs> wine, liquor, cigars, you know, wholesale, perhaps we might be able to find that, even, even with other, you know, city records, which, uh, there's all things I need to do. Um, okay, then, uh, then as we're winding down here, just a, a little bit, of course, then about the African American, uh, who African Americans who were the subject, who were the one of the principal targets as uh, uh, of the rioters, um, and uh, and and their depiction. So this is <coughs> this is actually perhaps one of the one of the more benign pictures of the attacks on uh, on uh, Black New Yorkers, called "Rioters Chasing a Negro Woman and Children Through the Vacant Lots in Lexington Avenue," uh, New York Illustrated News, um, and I guess the first question is what are you seeing here vis-a-vis -vis, you know the representation of of African Americans to me it's echoing fugitive slavery well, that's true yeah 
and particularly sort of the powerlessness of the few, uh, of, of, of the slave. I mean, of course, then they you know then they become you know more. And I, I'm actually showing the uh, some of the less graphic you know images. There's there's been uh, this is a, a mob lynching a Negro on Clarkson Street, so it's near the docks. Uh, and uh, this one actually was in the Illustrated London News. Uh, I mean, the the there is a lot of there are a lot of images of, of violence against African Americans, um, and uh, and this is one actually that's a bit more unusual, which is um, the encampment of refugee Negroes near Bergen Point, New Jersey. And here we are in New Jersey um, during the late riot in New York. Um, so this is this is actually the I mean there's you know a large number of African Americans uh, escaped to Brooklyn, uh, but then clearly as an indication in New Jersey. I think it's safe to say that the things that the the images quite clearly show black victims. I, I would still argue blameless victims, but let's just say victims and powerlessness. But they're bracketed. They're bracketed by the depiction of events preceding and following the riots. In other words, this is not the only time people look at the Illustrated Press. They've been looking at it all along. So if, if you consider that, for example, um, on, the, on the left, I showed this picture to you yesterday, the Port Hudson, uh, the this, this successful uh, you know, taking of Port Hudson, largely by black troops. This was, the, as I told you yesterday, the assault of the 2nd Louisiana Colored Regiment on the Confederate works at Port Hudson. Uh, which took place on May 27th and was published in Frank Leslie's on June 27th. And then, of course, oh, sorry, I jumped ahead there. Um, on the right, there is Fort Wagner, reporting of Fort Wagner, which took place, uh, you know, of course, on, on July 18th and was reported in, the, in, in August. But these are not the only reporters at the time. Uh, the Millikan's Bend. Uh, with black troops, uh, you know, taking an active part, it took place on June second. It was reported on July fourth. They appeared in Harper's Weekly, and and lots of images. At least two that I've, uh, at least two significant images I've seen. One in Harper's Weekly, uh, on recruit black people recruiting to get in the army, just before Gettysburg, knowing that that Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, when Pennsylvania, that one was in Harper's Weekly, and the New York Illustrated News, which was actually, uh, uh, and interestingly, extremely hostile to free African Americans in New York City, suddenly showing a, f an, a, a full page illustration with no commentary around it, a very stalwart looking African American men marching to join the Union Army. Those are surrounding those riot pictures. And I just, you know, that's my sort of warning that the, that the riot pictures can't be understood, separated out from that larger record of the, of the pictorial press. And I'll just close with, with less controversial, but also just raising this notion about how there's also this cartoon, this political cartoon world that can convey significant amount. I mean, this was one actually that was published in Vanity Fair a year before the riot, but I think it's, it's one of the few pieces of evidence that we see overtly about the um, conflict between African American and Irish workers on the docks in New York City. Uh, and uh, this one was called The Irrepressible Conflict, and, and, the, um, and it's phrased as uh, saying uh, the, the man on the right is, is labeled as an Irish longshoreman. He's labeled as a, a Celtic person. Uh, and says, t saying to a Negro, well, you may be a man and a brother, sure enough, but it's little hospitality you'll get out of your relations on this dock, me old buck. So, I mean, it's, it, it's just a valuable piece, actually, a visual, uh, visual information on, on uh, the social history and, for that matter, economic history at the time. Uh, and these what are just... What year is that again? Sorry? What year is that one? Uh, it's, it's 1862, August 2nd, 1862. Uh, and then there's uh, many, many cartoons that follow up from, uh, from the riots. One calling a result of New York riots <coughs> that was in Frank Leslie's where the proprietor of a crib, see crib was used then too, um, Bagora, the shanty looks elegant since I fetched the piano in and the pig and the poultry take to it so natural-like. <laughs> and then uh, a, a, a more actually intriguing one which just suggests this one is called Good Claim uh, and it was in actually I've yet to find <coughs> out what publication it was in. It's in uh, the Antiquarian Society it has this wonderful collection 
of Civil War cartoons, many of which had no action, because they were all cut out of the original <laughs> publications. Uh, and in either case, uh, eventually I will. Um, I suspect, by the way, it's the budget of fun. But anyhow, it says, uh, this is uh, one young woman speaking to another, uh, actually elegant young woman. My dear, I'm puzzled to say how much I ought to have from the city for compensation. First, there were my nerves. What amount of dollars could compensate for the shock they got? Then there was no ice for two days. And my poor little Fido had no fresh jelly. Then, you know, there was that dear Captain Dash, too frightened to come and see me. I should think $5,000 too little for such a deprivation. Uh, and there was, by the way, indeed, no ice, uh, by the way, in New York for a few days. That, that, that actually is illustrated in, in there as well. And then finally is the final image, which I thought was uh, you know, particularly interesting, is that a month after the riots, uh, there's a depiction in the New York Illustrated News of soldiers of the Army of the Potomac receiving the news of the late riots in New York. And it's hard to see here, but not only are they reading it, but they're stabbing the newspapers, and, uh, and there's certainly a, a reaction against the riot. But So that's my spiel, but that's the sort of notion about at least one way that uh, I'm hoping that an examination of this provides substantial additional evidence to be sure that needs to be not simply tweaked but deeply uh, informed <coughs> and uh, compared uh, you know, with other evidence um, that has been ignored for 150 years. <laughs>